This is a demonstration of SharePoint 2013 using Nintex workflow and forms. We're going to show a demonstration this morning of an HR example where you have a vacation request or time off request. And this is simply just an example of how you can take workflow in a business process and automate it with the combination of SharePoint and the Nintex user interface. So in today's example, we're just going to show you the end user experience first and then show you the workflow of how we actually built this in the background. So we're looking at a page with the time off request list here, of requests that have been made, and then over on the right hand side, the calendar that shows all of the approved items that are out there. So from an end user's perspective, what they're going to do is go out and fill out a form to create the request and kick off the process. So as an end user, I want to request a day off. I'm going to request sick leave, and you can see the types of requests that are here. And I'd like for my request to start on the 19th, and I'd like for that to finish on the 26th of the month. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save, and what's going to happen is as soon as I hit save, the new list item is created, but the workflow is immediately kicked off. So we'll see here that I just got an instant message that says that your sick leave request was received. Now that notification could come via an instant message like you see here, but it could have also been email. But since I'm online and my presence is green, it's known, in this particular example, um, it's going to come via instant message. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over into the supervisor's computer right here. And we're going to open this up and wait for the email to come in. There it is. Stating that an individual has requested time off. Now the thing to note here is that this form or this email that has been received in is very much tailored to this specific request. So you'll see here it says Eden has requested sick leave, the type of request, starting on the 19th, returning on the 26th for a total of 48 hours, and HR is reporting that he has a balance of 80 hours available. So the boss has everything that he or she needs to know in order to process that request. And the workflow is inputting all of this data into the email. But now that the boss is ready to make the decision, they could open up the website and go through the approval process. They could open up Nintex Mobile on their mobile device or on their local machine. Or what they could do is just reply to the email directly using what's called lazy approval with the term approved and hit send. What will happen with lazy approval is the workflow recognizes the terms that you type in, whether it's approved, yes, no, no way, whatever those terms are, and then processes the workflow based upon the terminology that was sent in. And you can come in and configure that to be whatever term you would like as far as uh, the approval or rejection is concerned. So we've replied to the email. I'm going to go ahead and minimize my boss's computer and get back to the page here. The workflow will receive the email, recognize the term, and then take it down the route which has been dictated in the workflow to go ahead and process that. So here in just a second, I'll get another instant message telling me that my sick day request was approved. Once it is approved, then it will go and add that item into the calendar automatically over here on the right-hand side. So we'll give this just a second for the email to come in or instant message, and there it is. And it says your sick leave request was approved. So pretty straightforward process, and that's the process from the end user's experience. Now when I refresh the screen, you'll notice over here on the right-hand side that the item is now in the calendar. So we've completed the entire process. So how did we build this or configure this in the platform? So we're going to open up the individual list and show you how this was configured. We're going to go over into the list settings, come over here to the workflow settings down here. I should say the ribbon interface, not the list settings. And we're going to click Manage Workflow. We'll see all the workflows that have been published. You can have unpublished ones as well. We'll open up this particular workflow. And once we get this open, you're going to see the Nintex interface right here. Essentially, you have all your actions over here on the left-hand side. 
and then you have your actual workflow on the right hand side. So if this was an example of kind of creating uh, uh, a recipe, you would have all your ingredients over here on the left hand side and you just drag and drop them over in the right hand side in order to create what you're trying to cook up here. Now in this particular example, we're going to go and as soon as the workflow kicks off, we're going to get the user's information. So in this example, it even could be an external system like ADP, maybe it's a payroll system. We want to come back into the list and modify the title and then send out a notification right here saying that the workflow or the vacation request was received. Now this is configured to immediately go to the requester. Uh, and where the way you find that is right here using the little people picker. We can go and do a lookup. And we can look up all kinds of information. And one of those fields within Active Directory is whoever made the request. We're going to type in the subject matter of that notification along with the body text down here. And then you can even put other references in here as well because you see leave type as a reference item. If we wanted to notate what the start date was, you can come in here and find the start date. This shows all the fields that are available in the form. Click OK and you know that start date's going to show up right there. I don't want to make any changes to this, so I want to go on and show you the rest of the workflow right here. After the notification is sent, the next thing we do is we go and get the leave balance. So again, this could be an external system like ADP where we can make a real quick web service call to say, go get the balance of the hours that I have. In my request, it happened for an entire week. So we don't want to remove the business days uh, or the weekends uh, into that. You know, you don't want it factored into the calculation. So we're going to remove those and calculate the business days. And then ultimately, we're going to ask the manager to make a decision right here. So this is called a flexi task. And when we come in to configure this, you'll see that, it, again, it's going to go to one of those fields within Active Directory. And this happens to be whoever my manager is. Here's the email that he's going to get. It's going to have the requester's name, requesting the type of leave, start date, end date, total business hours, and uh, the balance that you know HR is telling me that I have left over. And all of those items, even the hours and business hours, I should say, are stored in what are called variables. So when we made a request from that other system, we could bring it back in here and say, here are the variables that we got from that, uh, that, that call that we made. We have lazy approval turned on, and we can also have delegation turned on. And you can add other items in here. So if you wanted to, my request was a little ridiculous for an entire week of sick time. So I'm going to go ahead and put another one called pending, and then my supervisor could send it down that route as well. But notice some of the configuration options. Maybe the first response applies if it's multiple individuals. The majority must decide, or maybe all have to agree. So a lot of configuration options in here. Also things like reminders are in here as well. So that if the supervisor doesn't respond, we can send him four reminders, and that's the way this one's configured, every four hours, only during business hours. And then this is the message he's going to get asking us to reprove this item. And worst case, if he doesn't deal with that, then maybe you escalate it after a certain amount of time as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the Save button so that you'll see this other item show up here as far as another track that we can go down. Now if it's rejected, we'll send him another note saying, I'm sorry. If it is approved, we'll add it to the calendar like you saw. Go back into that other system and pull out the hours that he's requested, and then ultimately send another notification that it's been approved. So you can see how in this situation, it's literally just a drag and drop in order to configure the workflow here. Now the next thing I'm going to do very quickly is show you some of these actions that are over here. If there's an action that you don't see in the on-premise version, you can always create your own custom actions, which is what you see with the get balance, update lead balance, and validate the user here. But there are a lot of other ones that are out here just native to Nintex directly. We can call a web service, execute a SQL command, query BCS, all of these kind of integration points, at least these are the out-of-the-box ones over here on the left-hand side could be LDAP, BCS, XML, uh, Project Server, all kinds of integrations that are over here. A lot of just the native SharePoint functionality, you can check items in, check them out. Convert a Word document to a PDF, so maybe you're in the situation where you're going to issue a press release. That press release goes through an approval process via Word and then gets converted to a PDF.
You can create lists, delete items, check items in, check them out, like I was stating before. Even go into a Word document and update a Word document. So think about the legal process of requesting a contract. Press contract, which legal, has a document out on SharePoint. You can then input information into that document or the template, and then it can be emailed to you with all the specific information. And that's the way you can update the Word document is with that action. Update items, set field values. So as you're going through a process and you want to change the value of the item to um, new, to in progress, to pending changes, to closed, whatever the status is, you can do those kind of things with set the field value. Also a lot of logic and workflow. So we have filters, you can run loops, run ifs, parallel actions. So like in the onboarding process of employees, maybe HR has to go down one route. Um, IT has to go down another route and finance has to do something different. They can all do their things at the exact same time, so we can use the parallel actions. Also set conditions. And then in more complicated workflows, one of the more popular things to do is create what's called a change state. And essentially you may have a workflow where you make it through to a certain process, it gets rejected, you have to go to another process, or based upon a condition, I'm going to all of a sudden go to a certain section in a workflow. So you can, based upon inputs, you can direct the workflow in different directions with this change state in stating uh, or changing the state of each of those machines, which is really, really easy to configure. Nintex Live we'll come back to in just a minute, but there's a lot of operations as well. We can do math operations, log history, pause a workflow for a period of time, pause until something happens or for a specific date, I should say. And then you can do some other things here as well as far as uh, terminating the workflow and, and those kind of things. Also, in the enterprise version of Nintex, you can also um, add users into Active Directory, create Active Directory groups, create Active Directory users, sites, decommission sites, decommission users, all kinds of stuff that you can do in here, even delete sites as well. And as far as the user interface is concerned here, in these actions, you can create Outlook appointments, tasks and Outlook. You can even go get meeting suggested times as well. So a lot of actions that you have over here on the left-hand side. And again, anything uh, that you don't see, you can create or have maybe your IT group create some custom actions. The other thing is, is you have Nintex Live as well. And in Nintex Live, you have this catalog of items that are out here that you can use to connect external services within your environment. So you'll see in here you can connect to Amazon, Bing, uh, Box to query files, DocuSign for digital signatures, if you need to get the signature on a particular document, uh, Dynamic CRM online, Exchange Server, MailChimp, uh, a lot of other services that are in here as well. Microsoft Azure to create virtual machines, um, Office 365 environments, Salesforce, and Salesforce Chatter, in addition to um, SharePoint Online. Even Twitter, if you need to tweet on behalf of the organization, you can have an approval process set up in Yammer as well. So a lot of external things that you can connect to. The last thing I want to show you is Nintex Forms as well. So we're going to come back to the list, and I'll give you a quick reminder of the form that we saw just a second ago that's right out of the box. Kind of plain vanilla form that's right here. And if I cancel out of that and go into the ribbon interface, right beside the Info Path button, you'll find a Nintex Forms button. And this will automatically create a Nintex form and allow you to come in and configure this form to meet what your organization is trying to do or you're trying to do with this particular form. Now, in your situation, you can ignore the Nintex Forms logo and put your organization's logo out there. And then you can start to move around all these fields to build out your particular form. So in this example, maybe I want to move uh, all these down onto one line. So I'll move the end date and start date down here on the same line. And we can really configure this form to look the way that we want to. I'll move start date down as well and the associated field here. And as we shrink these items down, I'm now making room for more stuff to go above it. Or maybe we want to put some introductory text right here. So a lot of things we can do form-wise. You can even drag and drop 
a border, a geolocation, labels, all kinds of fun stuff we can drag and drop from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. We can look up items within the SharePoint list here, attach, and all these other things just come right into the form. And then we can even put rules in place as well. So if we wanted to have a rule that says, when I request sick leave, I want the end date to disappear, you can simply come in here and add rule, do the formatting. I can associate this rule to that particular field right here, and then say that I want to hide that when that happens so that when you select sick leave, the end date ends because I don't necessarily know when that comes, uh, when I'm going to come back. So very, very easy to kind of configure those right here in the interface. Furthermore, one of the other things you can get into is every time you select each of these items, you get this tab, and that allows you to configure that particular selection. But the other thing is, is that you can also target mobile devices. So I'm going to select smartphone as a targeted device, and now you'll see the view for smartphones. And we could do Nintex mobile phone, mobile tablet, or even get into other specific devices if you wanted to target iPhones versus Androids versus iPads. So very, very much a configurable interface right here. And I'm going to go back to desktop. And then the other thing you can do as well with Nintex Forms is you have the live settings, and you can even take this form and publish it to anonymous users. So folks outside of your organization need to get access, or not access, but submit a form into your internet. You can use that for anonymous access as well. So a lot more things that we could show in the workflow and forms here, but this is just kind of a general overview of the forms and workflow tool. Thanks.